Obey my commands. God bless you both. Touch up. a slow start, which he usually likes to do, Daniel. Why is that? Because Bibble is a, a puncher that throws shots and bunches. He has a large uh, arsenal that he uses, but one of them being his punch count. So Canelo can't start off short and slow because he'll be back trailing. And he's going to throw that jab a lot. In his last fight, 76% of his punches were jabs. Talking to Bebo's team this week, they want to be unpredictable with the right hand. They felt Kovalev was more too predictable when he tried to throw that. They want to make Canelo thinking about that right hand for most of this fight. Canelo trying to come around the guard, the high guard of Bebo right now with left and right hooks. Tight guard being shown here by Canelo. Same tight guard that he had in front of Kovalev, like Manic said. So that jab will be effective, even if it's just touching those gloves. Vivol's never been down. 11 KOs, 19 wins. Of course, Canelo has never been knocked down either. Left hand off the top of the head from Alvarez. There's that right hand stabbing jab downstairs. I want to see more body shots. a way around the guards. He had a little difficult time with Caleb Plant. He finally found a right hand, a home for the right hand to the gut, to the right side, to the left side of Plant's shoulder roll defense. Chris, is this going to see, is this going to be the way B-ball fights every single round tonight? You know, that's the sense I got from talking to his team. They want to create the distance between Canelo and keep throwing that jab because when they watch back the Kovalev fight, they know that Kovalev didn't hurt Canelo. But that fight was close on the scorecards at the time of the stoppage because of the sheer volume of punches, jabs specifically, that Kovalev was throwing. And look at him throwing more frequently here in round one. A good start for Bebel. Bebel has better fundamentals and foundation than Kovalev in a lot. He has smart feet, always aware of his positioning with his footwork. But he has to gain the respect of Canelo because Canelo is just walking past it down his guards. So we're off and running. Round two here between Bebo and Canelo. As expected, Bebo has showered jabs onto Alvarez. There's more of them. Canelo doing a good job blocking those, but they're always there, Sergio. Yeah, but he hasn't let go of that right hand yet. I want to see how Canelo's going to react with the strength of that right hand, whether it's to the chin or to the body, because Bebo does throw a nice piercing right hand to the body as well. So right at the end of the first round, at the start of the second round, Canelo trying to sneak that uppercut on the inside. Keep an eye on that moving forward. There's a one-two from Bebo. just misses. You can hear the crowd respond to that. Bibble seems as if he's just trying to find what works for him. He's tapping him, trying to find the range, trying to see what punches he can land comfortably. Watch your head. 
But Canelo defense is extremely tight. It's really hard to get past that high guard. It really is. That's why you got to be content with just touching those gloves. Take what you can. And we saw Canelo Alvarez against Callum Smith constantly hit his arms. Do you think Alvarez might try to do the same to Bebo to stop the jab? Yeah, in that first round, I noticed Canelo was landing to the left shoulder of him. So maybe he wants to tire out those shoulders as well. Keep aiming at those biceps. Oh, that snuck through. Caught the chin a little bit for Canelo. Whenever Canelo starts loading up, even if you block those shots, they're still going to have an impact. Bebo's going to find that out soon. No, no, don't, don't push him, don't push him. Look at Bebo trying to be the boss. And this is what Bebo has to do. Even if he makes it a little bit ugly, pushing him, leaning on him, he has to be aggressive. And he has to make it uncomfortable for Canelo. And Danny, we talk about Canelo having such great power. Is this more power than Bebo's used to, considering he's the heavier fighter? I would say so. Canelo is definitely a, a, a jam-packed type of power fighter. And so his punches has a lot of thump behind him, including speed. This might be a little bit different than what uh, Bebo's experienced before. Swing and a miss with the left hook by Canelo. Well, Chris, he wanted to fight a light heavyweight, and Dimitri Bebo looks the part so far. Yeah, Dimitri Bebo looks sharp in these early rounds. He clearly has a good game plan, and he is throwing that right hand a little bit more than I expected him to early on. There's that right hand to the body. That, uh, that's a sneaky power punch by Bebo that sits up. The right hand upstairs. I want to see more punches like that for Canelo. Not, not many opponents throw body shots at Canelo. There's another uppercut trying to split the guard for Alvarez. But you can see when Bebo throws the one-twos like this, he is scoring. And these are bothering Canelo, Daniel. And you can excuse oh. me, Daniel. You can see the, the forehead of Canelo getting red in as well. So th those jabs and those punches, even though they're not. A lot of power behind him. They're still having effect. That left goes around the guard of Bebo. He's keeping that hand up high because he has to. Well, the game plan is pretty obvious for Bebo, and so far it's been fairly successful. Jabs, straight right hands in bunches. And stepping back, not, get, not giving Canelo a chance to break that range. Maintain that, that distance, stay behind the jab. Yeah, Sergio, too, but he's stepping back with his hands up, which is a good thing. You know, as the last fight we've seen, the last fight, he stepping back with his hands down, it wasn't a good... Stop, and how go. about Bebo coming back after Alvarez landed those right hands? And that's why Bebo's gonna be such a hard fight. Not only because of the jab and the footwork, but you're right. He pulls back with the hands up, so it's hard to pierce those gloves. Or get a flurry from Bebo. And there was a conversation, Chris, all week long. Can Bebo win a decision over Canelo Watch your in head. Vegas? Watch your head. I think he can if he throws punches like this. We've seen Canelo in the early stages of a fight take his time and then start to figure out his opponent and wear him down. Sergio, do you think he can do that against this bigger man? I, I just, he, he's going to have a, a harder time doing it with Bebo because look, Bebo's not going to stay against the ropes just like he did there. He's always going to have to fight in the middle of the ring and Bebo is not loading up on punches as well. We haven't seen a lot of fire, fighters come after Canelo the way that Bebo has. an excellent round for Dimitri Bivol. So a good start for Dimitri Bivol as we begin round four. 
Canelo wanted to be challenged, Daniel. He wanted to face the best of the best. He's got a challenge tonight, doesn't he? Absolutely, but I'm wondering when we're going to see the power of Vivid. As of now, we've seen defense, we've seen speed, we've seen movement, but we haven't seen that light heavyweight power that we know he has. Chris Mannix, how do you have it scored through three rounds? I've got it two rounds to one in favor of Dimitri Bivol. I think his combinations have been sharp. His jab has been active. Both these guys are very good defensive fighters. Both are keeping their guards up, catching a lot of these punches. But Bivol, the volume has worked for him in the first three rounds. I like that nice right hand. Yeah, right hand to the body. You don't see, as you mentioned, a lot of fighters go to Canelo's body. Bebo is doing it here and going back upstairs as well. Bebo's not much of a body puncher, but it's that right hand right there that does enough work. And it sets up all the punches upstairs afterwards. Bebo doing a pretty good job defending the right hand of Canelo, although it has scored at times. Bebo doing a great job backing up, not letting Canelo plant his feet. Staying off the ropes, just like that. His back's touch the ropes, he's moving laterally. According to CompuBox, Bebo has thrown 40 more punches than Alvarez so far. Canelo's sitting down on those right hands. Canelo's been all power shots this round. A little bit. I think he is. I, I believe he is because he's not having no success backing up Bevo and trying to uh, uh, punch through the guard. So now he's trying to play possum a little bit and try to get Bevo to get overconfident. But not going to happen. I mean, that's not his game plan. That's not Bevo's strategy. Discipline is one of his strongest attributes. Yes, it is. Now Canelo starting to come forward a little bit. Saw the shots. Leaving an impression two on Bivol. Well, I think through four full rounds, it's pretty apparent that this is not going to be a walk in the park for Canelo Alvarez, who's a five to one favorite according to the odd makers here in Vegas. But we've seen this before with Canelo Alvarez, where he's biding his time. Maybe even losing rounds or close rounds. We've seen it with Caleb Plant. We've seen it with B.J. Saunders. And then, in a flash, he turns it on. Last round, it was B-Ball who was coming forward. Start of the fifth, it's Canelo. Bivol not throwing back as much this round. Yeah, Canelo is making a point to win this round and back up Bivol, make him feel his power. Those are big right hooks, overhand rights being landed by Canelo. Oh, look at Bivol. Look at him go. From Canelo? No, I just think that's discipline by Bebo. I mean, he landed his shots, got the crowd going, landed his points, then he went back on control. That's what he does so well. He stays in control. 
no emotion from B-Ball. He's a boxing robot in there. And that's what you need when you're fighting Canelo. You need that discipline. You don't fight with emotion. You fight with intelligence. That's what Dimitri Bivol is so great at. What do you make of his demeanor so far, Daniel? Bivol's demeanor to me seems as if he's just trying to weather the storm right now because Canelo is putting on an onslaught. And so maybe he's trying to just patiently wait, maybe let Canelo die down a few. But ultimately, his movement is still apparent. And so as long as he can stay moving like this, he can stay in this fight. Another good jab, and then a left from Bivol. Who started out slow in this round, but finished strong. Yeah. They were, and you know, Bivol's overall activity has dipped the last couple of rounds, but that flurry right there might have been his most effective one of the night. And Canelo claimed to want more of it as he tried to wave Bivol back in, but Bivol not having it. And the reason Canelo couldn't counter uh, that onslaught and that combination is because Bivol wasn't loading up. He was just turning his waist and shoulders. Finishing off with a straight right hand is Bivol, and again he connects. Very impressive stuff by Bivol. Trying to land the right hand again. Let's see if he goes back to the uppercut that was successful early on in this fight. There is one. Anytime Beagle's back hits the ropes, he gets right in the center of the ring. That's ring generalship, and that's the reason Canelo's having a hard time pinning down Dimitri Bivol. I think Canelo's gonna have to be content with hitting shoulders, arms, and forearms in this fight because Bivol. His defense is too tight, the footwork's too good. Chris, is this the type of fight you thought we'd see in the sixth round? Well, I expected this much activity from Dimitri Bivol with the jab. I didn't expect this many combinations, and really the comfort level. We spoke a lot before this fight, but would the flights in the moment be too big for Dimitri Bivol at this point? Absolutely not. He seems unaffected by everything as we check in with Sean Porter. Listen. Dimitri Bivo supporters hang on. I do have him losing this fight. Two rounds to three, but what I'm seeing from him, I'm gonna mimic what Sergio Mora said. Control, discipline, intelligence. Hang on because this fight might get tight the way that Bivo is, is uh, performing right now. It's already tight, I would say. Here in round six, 50 seconds to go. It could be 3-2 either way. Tent to lay against the ropes, hoping he can counter Bivol. Bivol looking right at the chest of Canelo. You asked earlier, Todd, if you look at a person's eyes or chest, Bivol's looking straight at the chest. And he's looking to set this right hand up. Came around the guard with a left hook right there. I love the punch selection by Bivol right now. Just like Canelo, he's looking for an opening and land something big as well. Total focus. much fatigue. I see Canelo coming forward, but I do start to see Canelo face starting to take some shots and starting to swell up a little bit and start to see a little bit of red here and there from Bivol staying as sharp as he is. I see the same thing, and I might even throw a little frustration on Canelo's part. If you look both at their faces, Bivol's the one that looks calm and collected with the poker face. Canelo showing a little, a little bit of frustration. We know Canelo can turn things around in a snap. The fight against Sergey Kovalev, as we talked about earlier, was very close until Canelo changed everything in a hurry, getting the knockout victory. Now, this fight is resembling more of a Caleb Plant fight, I believe, because Plant, you know, he was having his moments and a lot of close rounds as well. Let's take a look at our CompuBox numbers as Bivol throws a few jabs. Punches landed in the last round. Bivol 13 compared to six for Alvarez. There you go, see? 
aiming at the, at the arm, the left arm of Bebo now. It's ready. That's exactly the game plan that Canelo had against Callum Smith. Do you think this strategy would work against Canelo? Bebo Scooby. Trying to break him down, his arms, all these different things. Do you think that'll work? I, I, you know what? We're going to find out, Daniel, because right now he has to be satisfied hitting something. True. I like that right hook to the body right there. Instead of punching straight at the arm, just dig down to the left side of the body of Bebo. Let's check it with Chris Mannix, who's in the corner of Bebo. Joel, how do you think Dimitri's doing out there? He's doing great. For me, he's winning the fight. Canelo's not landing anything clean. The, the, the cleanest shots, Dimitri's been landing them. Canelo tries to throw, but he's blocked. But Dimitri's been landing most of the shots. And he's a busier guy. Is this, was this part of the game plan, the entire game plan coming in? Exactly. See, he's blocking every punch. Look, he, he landed like four punches in a row. Thanks, Joel. I think Joel was trying to yell so the judges could hear. Look, he's hitting four times in a row. See, Canelo's doing nothing. No, man, I, I agree with Joel. This could be 3-3-4-2, three, three, but Beagle, Beagle looks like he's following the game plan a little bit better than Canelo. That's what I'm talking about with the frustration. One thing I've noticed, too, is how Beagle is able to take the shots of Canelo. Even the arm shots, even the close shot, the, the shot that graze him. He's able to almost seem as if he's not bothered. And that's because he's been in with big, destructive punchers like Joe Smith and others. Bruising and redness on the face of Canelo Alvarez. Bebo looks much better, at least physically right now. Just a moment ago, both of you said, hey, this could be tied. Maybe Bebo will go around. There's some that probably say, wait a minute, Bebo's probably Watch winning this 6 1 5 2. I wouldn't go that far either, but yeah, it's a close fight, and I will edge out Bebo. Let's see what Chris Mannix thinks. I've got it 68 65 in favor of Dimitri Bebo. That jab is being used flawlessly as a weapon. Bebo is throwing combinations, he's landing, he's having more success landing punches than really anyone I've seen since Gennady Golovkin back in 2017-18. And he just did so there. It's the one-two combination for Beeble, and it's been finding its mark most of the night. Anybody that will tell you how Beeble will win this fight, this is how he'll do it. With the one-twos, bashing Canelo up, moving in circles, staying off the ropes, Beeble is doing exactly what he needs to do to win this fight. Jess McCaskill, how do you have it? I think Beeble is really pulling it off here. The copy box numbers say it all. It's not just that Beeble is giving us great combinations, but he's stopping Canelo from throwing. So if Canelo doesn't have an output, he's not going to dominate this fight. Look at that left hook from Beeble, who's now pushing forward like he hasn't done in a while. And the Russian is bullying Canelo against the ropes, pushing him, punching at him, not giving up, not stepping back. Yeah, it seems as if the ties are switch for me. How about this? Bebo has landed double-digit punches in every single round. Canelo has not landed double-digit punches in any round. Canelo oh, missed right hand. Canelo missed three punches, fell off balance, went back to the ropes. He wants to bait Bebo to make a mistake. Bebo's not giving him that mistake. All the while, Bebo is scoring with these counters. So Canelo needs to come forward and do what he's been doing the first half of this fight. The biggest, biggest moment of Dimitri Bebo's career, and he has risen to the occasion thus far. I feel like because he's down right now that he's fighting in these spurts, he shouldn't do it. He should continuously, even if it's not hard shots, just let your hands go a little bit more. Canelo. Canelo, you can see jogging around the ring, trying to get some life perhaps back in his legs. 
Some concern from Eddie Reynoso. There has been concern in that corner the last three rounds. And there's a little concern in the eyes of Canelo as well. Jumping off that stool, trying to liven his legs up. Well, this is a better start for sure. Has Canelo finally met his match? The live odds, believe it or not, still have Canelo as the favorite. The bookmakers think Canelo's going to turn the heat up here over the last few rounds. And history proves that it's hard to win a decision against Canelo in Vegas. Golovkin came up short twice. A lot of people felt Caleb Plant was having success. The judges disagreed. <laughs> Even Floyd Mayweather, when he fought him, one judge had it a draw. Exactly. Let's check in with Chris Mannix. You know, Todd, one thing about Canelo, having watched and scored a lot of his fights lately, he's often a very easy fighter to score for. His punches are often clean, but Dimitri Bivol's defense has been excellent. He is overwhelming Canelo with the sheer volume of his punches. This is just an incredibly difficult fight Canelo's in. He hasn't figured out a way to get to Dimitri Bivol. But Bivol has found a way to get to Canelo. And the reason he's finding the way is because it's it's his footwork. He doesn't smother himself coming in. And then when Canelo wants to attack, he bounces back, steps back, still punching. Now it's starting to look to me that Canelo bit off just a little bit more than he can chew. This is the second foray into light heavyweight division for Canelo. He knocked out Kovalev, and he may have to do the same to Bivol. Things continue. Bivol is a natural light heavyweight, so guarding, putting his earmuff defense in is good enough for him because he's that strong. The crowd roaring their approval for Alvarez. At this point, Canelo's not going to pierce that guard. Bivol is already accustomed to that power. You can hear Dimitri Bivol's corner screaming at him. 30 seconds. Oh, they want to assure this victory. Well, this is a much better round for Canelo. And that's why they're screaming at Bivol to work. Nothing's really landed, but Canelo's definitely punching more and punching at the guard of Bivol, which is what he's going to have to do to win these rounds. Let's see if the crowd can rally Canelo here in the 10th. Three rounds to go. Bebo having the performance of his life so far. Jack. And Sergio Bebo just doesn't even look too bothered, does he? he? He's just calm. He's calm and relaxed, and then that's the reason he's having so much success. And then goes back to that power jab. He gets his work set, work in, pulls out with his footwork, pops him with that jab. We asked Bebo during the fighter meetings, do you think you can win a decision in Las Vegas? He said, you know what? If I feel like I won, that'll be good enough for me. I don't worry about the judges. Not sure he would feel that way right now. But we shall see. And look at the punches through round nine. My word, 110 to 61. Chris, are you surprised by what you're seeing? I'm very surprised. Dimitri Bebel, start to finish, has had a really effective game plan. And Canelo Alvarez, one of the smarter fighters in all of boxing, who often has a plan B, a plan C, when coming into fights, has not figured out how to get to Dimitri Bebel. And Dimitri Bebel, frankly, looks like the fresher fighter as we're halfway through the 10th round. Well, Canelo told us how much respect he had for Bebo and told us how good he thought Bebo is. And Canelo was right. And Todd, this looks in many ways like the first Golovkin fight, where Canelo's fighting off the ropes, off his back foot a lot. He managed to come away with a disputed draw in that fight, but Bebo, he looks like he's winning it. Counter right hand snaps the jaw. 
Doesn't look like he's winning. He's winning this fight. Daniel, what should Canelo be doing differently? I feel like Canelo should be taking it a little bit more seriously. It's good to slip punches. It's good to look good defensively, but when you're down, and I feel like he knows it's a large possibility he may be down, he got to do something better. He got to step it up. I think this is a fight where Canelo's heavy feet, I mean, it's, it benefits him to keep his feet planted because he's so explosive. But when you're dealing with a technician with good footwork like Bevo, you're going to have to step up your, 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 your footwork. Well, Canelo is chasing greatness by being in this division, and he's going to have to be great the rest of the way to win this. here from Canelo. We see his arms up in the corner between rounds. That usually shows that the, that the fighter is fatigued. I don't know if it's the vegan diet. I don't know if it's the pressure that Bebo is putting on and him coming up, obviously coming up in weight class. But Bebo looks very unbothered. He's even getting closer to Canelo here, letting himself be in Canelo's range, maybe because he's seeing less of kind of power from Canelo. A right hand scores for Bebo. Let's check in with Chris Mannix's scorecard. Yeah, I've got Dimitri Bivol in complete control despite at the moment 97-93 on my scorecard. Canelo Alvarez will either need a couple of knockdowns or knockout to win this fight. Mannix, how does the judges panel look here tonight? Are you confident they'll get it right? I'll say this, it's one of the best judging panels you can ask for. Tim Cheatham, Dave Moretti, Steve Weisskopf, who I consider the gold standard. When it comes to boxing judges, these are the best, some of the best of the best in all of boxing. Only one man has beaten Canelo Alvarez. That's a great Floyd Mayweather Jr. Right? He did it by fighting Canelo on his terms. That's what Bevo is doing right now. He fights someone he wants, but he boxes more often. Stepping back and always staying in control, not giving up control. Whoa. Yeah, he's frustrated. With acts like this, Canelo is definitely frustrated. He's been frustrated. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Every, everyone thinks that it takes brute strength to beat a brute puncher, but it takes finesse and a game plan and technique and a strategy and discipline, which is what Bevo has been doing this entire fight. Can you imagine if Bevo can knock out Alvarez? It appears he might be going for it. He's going for it, but I don't think he's landing anything big. He's just Let go. pushing back and bullying the bully. Let go. Go. I've never seen Canelo with this type of body language. Bevo is doing what he always does. He fights within himself. He doesn't get out of character. There's a right hand that splits the guard for Canelo. Close the show in dramatic fashion. Can Bevo write his name in the books? Daniel, I think he's in control right now. He should just stay behind that beautiful jab, not take any more chances. He did exactly what he needed to do to be in his position in this last and final round. But if history repeats itself, he must know it's better to close the show than to have some foolery done at the end of the fight. And that's the way we're seeing the fight, but who knows what the judges are seeing. I think it's safe to say, though, that Canelo has to win the 12th round. Bruising body attack here from Canelo. But it's being blocked. Bevo is accustomed to that power, and he's strong. He's a natural light heavyweight. Those punches are not having any effect on Bevo. Very true. 
Was Bebo just too big and just too strong for Canelo Alvarez, who's trying to unify another division? Too big, too strong, and most importantly, too smart. Yes, sir, Joe, when it gets to a point where Beagle's hitting him, just that will, and he's a bigger guy. It's almost very nerve-wracking for Canelo. Last round, but, you know, I thought Canelo could have, with one of those shots could have went down. Very strong chip for Canelo. Canelo has fought 18 different world champions. Only Floyd Mayweather has beaten him. And Beagle has only faced two world champions, and he's in a position to beat the champion of the world.